Welcome to our first edition of Candidates Corner. I'm Mark Lindy, the General Manager of Brockton Community Access, and it's going to be our goal at BCA to inform you about all the candidates for mayor, for councilor at large, for city council, and for school committee during the 2019 preliminary election and final election in November. My first guest on my first show is Gene Bradley Duranicourt, who is a city councilor at large right now, and he is running for mayor. Welcome, Gene. How are you? Hello, Mr. Chairman. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So, um, first, historic yeah. first. <laughs> first elected Haitian American city councilor for Brockton, mm -hmm. but that, that's statewide, right? And also the first male Haitian American elected official as uh, well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And now you're going for the number one spot. You ran citywide. <laughs> Councilor at large, yeah. so you, you ran citywide, you knocked on all the doors all over the city, and you want a promotion, mm -hmm. right? Not promotion, so we want to serve the people. You want to serve the people, yes, okay. To the so, best of our ability. Um, <clears throat> I met you over at Massasoit Community College mm -hmm. when you were running for student trustee, yes. okay? <laughs> and I saw you out in the hallway shaking hands, and I yeah. said, This guy is going to get elected. You said that, yeah. I did. I, I told I, I you that. You weren't one of my students because yeah. I teach there part time. Yeah, you said that. But I said you were going to get elected, and I actually have been pretty successful in predicting all the student trustee elections ever since. I've, a lot of students in my speech class have yes. one student trustee. Okay. That's perfect. You then went from that, and you were elected to other things over at Massasoit, yeah. correct? Awesome, student Senate. Yes. Student Senate, International Touch Club, yes, things did. like that. We got a great school over there. <laughs> I don't have to talk to you about that because I remember you doing a, a keynote speech yeah, back was, a few years yeah, ago. That was. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you ran for city council or at large. Yeah. You didn't just stick to a ward. Mm -hmm. You live in Ward 1. I live in Ward 1. Yeah. You ran citywide. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the mayor's race, mm -hmm. what are you trying to do? And then we'll talk about some of the current issues that are going on today right here in Brockton and the future. Well, let's face it. Uh, first, I would like to thank you for taking the time to actually allow me to do this interview and as your first guest to, uh, on that show. And, of course, uh, the audience, uh, you folks uh, who are watching at home as we speak, and, of course, some of you that will watch um, at a later date. So the city of Brockton has been so good to me. And as you know my story, uh, I've been in America for eight years. I came here. Uh, after the 2010 earthquake that destroyed Haiti. Unfortunately, you know, when I was looking for a place uh, to stay and a place to be, the city of Brockton opened its arms for me. And this is something that um, I will never and ever and ever forget because without having an opportunity to be in Brockton, especially after facing uh, some of the most disastrous moments of my life, uh, I wouldn't be able to be where I am. Because if you recall, I mean, you and I, I have this conversation all the time. So I could not speak a word of English, so I had to learn the language. But uh, one of the places that I cannot possibly forget is the Brockton Public Library, where I was able to, to go there and, 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 learn, and learn English as a second language, ESL. And Malis Vega, I have to give a lot of respect to that wonderful teacher, because without Malis Vega, as you know, this program wouldn't be able to actually continue what they are doing now because they don't receive any fund for it. But let's just get back to Brockton. Um, yes, I came in America eight years ago. I became a U.S. citizen about two years ago. But way before I was a U.S. citizen, I was involved in student government, Master's Red Community College. Like you stated, I was the uh, president of the uh, not president. Well, I was the president of the International Touch Club. I was a student senator, and I was elected student trustee. So, uh, by virtue of my involvement within the college, I believe that I was able not only to talk for myself, but also to represent the student. As you know, being a student trustee, it allows you to not only sit on the board, but sit in between the the board. I mean, the, the board of trustee president, and also the president of the college. So I was in between. So I was the voice of the students when I was at Master's of Community College in terms of like tuitions, in terms of like student life, in terms of like the well-being of the kids. But beyond that, after way before I was graduated, as you know, I was an intern for the former mayor of Brockton, Linda Balzotti, which was the first time I had an opportunity to come to BCA to do interview and observing what the mayor was talking about and listening to some of the stuff that she wanted to do for Brockton. So ever since I've been a friend, I've been a, a partner, I've been somebody who truly believe in BCA because I strongly believe BCA does and has been doing a wonderful job in the sense of like giving information out 
to some of our people who do not have the time to watch or who do not have the money to pay for all those big TV things. So in 2017, um, after working for, as you know, the former mayor of Boston, Linda Balzodi, the former governor of, Mass of Massachusetts, as an intern, Deval Patrick, and of course, State Senator Michael Brady as an aide, and I was in charge of the constituent services, or I should say, I was the director of constituent services until I resigned his job in, in April this year to one for me. So I've been giving back not only to Brockton, but also the state. But one of the things that I'm most proud of is the job that I had as a boss boy at Crystal's restaurant. This was my first job in America. And some of you who are watching the show as we speak, um, you probably do not remember me when I was bossing people at Crystal's because I couldn't speak the, the language, but all I could do was smiling at people and what have you. So that job truly allows me not only to know who I was as a person or who I am, I should say, but also it gives me the ability to understand or to empathize with someone else. Because during that moment, some people knew I didn't, I didn't know how to speak English, but they still take the time to listen to whatever I was saying. And of course, the Greek community, as you know, Chris was Greek, he opened so many doors for me as I was going to college and bossing table. And of course, I got promoted to make pizza, which I hated because it was too hot. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a wonderful promotion. And when I told him, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to make pizza, he said, well, you can do both. So I want people to understand my first job in America wasn't in government. My first job was working as a boss boy at Chris's restaurant, which closed a few years ago, which is so sad for Brockton because as we take a look or drive by that parking lot, there's nothing there. So one of the things that I've been able to see in Brockton is our ability to work together as one city and our diverse populations. I'm assuming you're going to ask more question in that. I'd be more than happy to detail Exactly, that. because Christos, who I knew my whole entire life since I've lived here my whole entire life, came to this country as an immigrant himself. Yes, he did. And he started off his <laughs> pictures in the Historical Society where we have his desk mm -hmm. In the historical society, I don't oh, you know do if you know that we have the desk with the microphone, the whole thing. I'm on wow. the board over there, and Chris took the opportunity himself to help others. Yes. I think I may have actually met you at Christos. I think I'm not you have. sure. Yeah. I think okay. you have because I knew all the people that I worked. There. I went I... there every single week, well, every year of my life. Mm -hmm. So and it's very well. I, I I worked there for two years. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I was working there, uh, although I was going to school, at least 50 to 60 hours, 50 to 60 hours a week. Which is still less than Chris. That yes, guy yes, lived indeed. there. Yeah, he did. <laughs> but, but, but one of the things that I can remember vividly was his determination to keep this place alive. And as you can see, after he passed away, the place collapsed. I mean, the place was huge. But and they his moved daughters to a takeout over in Whitman, Whitman, which is not the same. I'm sorry. Well, I, I will not go to that one. I'll I, let you. I, I'll let I, you I love their food, and I'm. I was an expert with their food because I ate it so many I'm, times. I'm still close with the family, Maria They're, and Gigi. Ni, ni, yeah. Nice, nice people. Yes. Wonderful family. They were and family. I, well, they I, are family. I remember to me. when Massasoit Community College Conference Center, which is now closed, that was Christos too. Yes, that was the second part. But let's get back to let's get back to the election. <laughs> but that's part of Brockton. Though. That's the but beauty of our city. I guess it's a good segue yeah. into the immigrant mm -hmm. story and the immigrant yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. So right now we're sitting at the end of May. Mm -hmm. The campaign has just kicked off because mm -hmm. April 29th was the first day anybody could take out papers, yes. and they're allowed to take out papers all the way till the end of July. Yes. Um, and you and Council President Moses Rodriguez co-sponsored a Brockton United ordinance. Mm -hmm which um, you can talk about why you guys co-sponsored it yes. and everything, but it just was defeated mm -hmm. at the, the, the I, I guess, the second reading mm -hmm. at the city council the mm -hmm. other day. Yes. What was your goal with Moses to put that ordinance into place, yes. and why do you think it didn't fly? Well, this is an excellent question, given the fact that, you know, we were dealing with this situation. As you know, that, that issue is over. So what I would like you folks to understand about what the chairman just stated is that uh, Council President Moses Rodriguez filed an ordinance on behalf of the Brockton United. Just in case you ask, what is Brockton United? Brockton United is 
in organizations of a bunch of organizations that come together to focus on certain issues that they believe in. So when that ordinance was first presented, if you recall, it was in 2013. At that time, the administration that we have now supported it. In 2015, they supported it. In 2017, they supported it. Mind you, during these years, I went, I was not even involved, well, I wasn't even an elected official. I wasn't even a US citizen. But unfortunately, in 2018, Council Moses Wajigas and myself got approached by the Boston United folks to somewhat we file it again in the spirit of making the city of Brockton a better place. Unfortunately, given the situation that we are dealing with, I was called out by the administration, I should say the mayor, March 28, 2019, saying that I want to turn this place into a bad place. And as we speak, if some of you drive up on Belmont Street, you will see sign saying to stop certain things. Folks, let me just be honest with you. I have been in America for eight years, and I've been in Brockton ever since. I love the city of Brockton more than you can possibly imagine. Because in 2010, when I needed a place to be, when I needed a place to stay, when I needed a home, the city of Brockton opened its door for me. And since that moment, every single thing that I've been doing in the city of Brockton is to make Brockton a better, stronger place for all of us, whether it's for our young people, whether it's for our seniors, whether it's for our residents. But one of the things that I will not accept and I will tell you straight is that as we speak, people are using this issue, which should never be mentioned much money because the paramount goal of the state of the city's address was to talk about what is the state of our city in terms of finance, in terms of public safety, in terms of education, in terms of our seniors, and in terms of our young people. But unfortunately, I was called out solely because, as you know, there was speculations on the news that John Bradley, the Renan court, might run for mayor. And what was so shock, the person that filed the ordinance wasn't even called out. I was called out, mm -hmm. and I wasn't even the main co-sponsor of that ordinance. Now, let me explain to you what was this ordinance was about. The paramount goal of this ordinance was to build trust and confidence among our residents and law enforcement in the sense of making Brockton a safer, better place for all of us. As some of you know, you get, people get shot of Brockton a lot of times, and recently we just got one, and that person is dead. I, myself, do not believe in living in a society where people feel scared to get out, to take care of the business, especially our seniors. After you dedicated your life for so long and you reach an age, you should be able to live your life accordingly without any kind of fear. And that's the Brockton that I would like to see. And that's the Brockton I want to build. Because for so many years, I have witnessed or hearing people talk about public safety all the time. But when it's come down for them to take action, they don't. So what we did, we filed that piece of legislation solely to tell everybody in Brockton, especially those who are undocumented, to be able to report crimes no matter when that crime is happening, no matter where, no matter who's doing it. We said, in order for us to build a stronger society, it's important for people to trust you. Because in criminal justice, there is one thing. When you want to solve crimes, if somebody doesn't trust you, they will not share any information with you. And as we speak, the DA asked me personally to be part, DA, DA Cruz, to be part of a task force that he formed to be able to talk to people mm -hmm. in a way that they will feel comfortable and share information so they can solve crimes, homicide, and suicide, and so many other things. So for me to get called out for something that I didn't even do, it was truly unfortunate. But I want you folks to understand this issue is over, but the goal was, well, there's a saying in Massachusetts, if you see something, to say something, 
We have so many people in our city who are facing domestic violence, who are unwilling to come out solely because they feel that if they do come out, they might be subject to consequences or they might be subject to all kind of stuff that our local law enforcement doesn't even do. So let's go into law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I know one of your key issues in your platform yes. is public safety. It's not out there yet. As you know, we are still drafting it. I know. We're yes. at the end of May yeah. and heading into June. Well, yeah. But um, so public safety, the mayor appoints the chief of police. Yes. The mayor has a lot of say in what happens with the police department. Mm -hmm. we, have a, we, have a, we have a good police force. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk about the police mm -hmm. force. There's a lot of talk about community policing, safe streets, mm -hmm. all sorts of things. What are you looking to see happen with public safety? Well, let's face it, though. Do you know, I will not gonna, I'm, I'm not going to mention a name. Do you know I got called from some of the police officers within the Brockton Police Department who are not happy about what's going on within the Brockton Police Department? But let's just talk about public safety. Public safety is not only driving a cruisers, is not only calling 911. Public safety is more about community policy. When I was going up back home in Haiti, whenever you see a cop, we assume responsibility and we respect them. And nowadays, when people see the police, they just don't care. I don't want to live in a society like that. But this is what I would like you to understand. The police work for us, us the taxpayers. So their job is to protect and serve us. And obviously, I mean, they've been doing an, an excellent job with the little that they have. But do we have room for improvement? Yes, we do. But what I want folks to understand, public safety is not only about how many cops you have on the street. Public safety is all about communication within our community, building trust and confidence so people can feel comfortable and being able to call 911 and knowing that when they do call, someone will act accordingly. Well, when was it? Yesterday, matter of fact, I was in a meeting in Ward 3. And one of the gentlemen there saying that when they call 911, it usually takes the police a long time to get there. I can understand that. But I want everybody in this city, when I become the next mayor of Brockton, I can promise every single one of you, when you call 911, someone will not only pick up the call, but they will act accordingly. Because the thing is that we got to be able to have the main power to do the job, but at the same time, an open communication with the, not just the police department, the fire department, the mayor's office, the city councils. And as you know, according to the history of government in the city of Brockton, we do have a communication problem. As we speak, I am one of your four city councillors at large. As we speak, I am serving you. And I like to say this, I am your employee. If you never hire someone before, guess what? When you voted for me in 2017 to be one of your four councillors at large, you automatically hire me. I work for you. My job is to do what you want me to do accordingly by my research and also the folks that I trust around me. But at the same time, I gotta be able to do what I think is best for all of us. And I say this all the time. I don't care where you live in the city of Brockton, whether you live on the south side, the north side, the west side, the east side. As long as you are a resident of Brockton, you should get the same treatment accordingly. Instead of talking about turning Brockton into a bad place, let's talk about education. Let's talk about public safety. Let's talk about empowering our young people. Let's talk about helping our seniors do what they want to do. Let's talk about bringing business downtown Brockton. Let's talk about fixing our roads. Let's talk about cleaning our city. Let's talk about helping everyone as opposed to a small group of people solely because they have backbones. I am your employee and I work for you. So public safety is something that you know I'm very passionate about. Not, not far from here, we have a homeless situation that is so crazy. You yes. talk to me about you know, how bad it is for your building. Because to pick up on what you just said, <laughs> there, I have four city councillors. Yes. I live in Ward 1, yes. so I have Tim Cruz who's my councillor, and I have four at-large councillors. Yes. I have one school committee member, I have one rep, one senator, so I believe in marshalling all the resources. The homeless situation downtown, my dad, I don't know if you know this, ran Main Spring House when he retired. I did not know that. He ran it for 18 months. 
he ran it a whole different way than they run it now. Okay. He wanted the women and the children over there to be safe. I'm not quite sure I want that they to are. Be safe. But there's an issue here, and it's been going on and on and on for years. I served on Do the you know what you need? Do you know what you need? We need bold, progressive, courageous action. Okay. When you take an action, so people will act on it accordingly. You cannot talk about public safety without talking about education. Let's face it. Well, that's we my have, next. <laughs> I know you like it. I know, you know that's my favorite topic. <laughs> I know you like education, but let's just face it, though. In order for us to solve problem, you got to be able to have people who trust you and being able or willing to give you information that you wouldn't have. Because in criminal justice, well, I'm not a cop, but I, I did study criminal justice a little bit in college. What I've learned is that when somebody doesn't trust you, it can be mom, dad, friend, or family member. When somebody doesn't trust you, Mr. Chairman, let's just be honest, they will not tell you anything. But if they do trust you, they will share whatever with you. And that's one of the reasons I believe the DA, DA Cruz, created that task force to be able to bring everybody on the table oh. so we can share information. And I believe I am, if I'm not mistaken, the youngest person within that group to talk about what are the best ways in which we can bring people together to solve crimes. Not only within the city of Brockton, but why not the Plymouth County? As you know, I worked for the state for about six years. I got called all over. Like I said, I used to be an intern at City Hall for Linda Balzotti. I was an intern for Governor Patrick. I worked for Senator Brady, uh, for Sid Brady, and I also worked for Senator Brady for four years. So I will not say that I know everything, but at first I do. In terms of government, I think I've been in and out. And not only this, if you recall, in 2014, I was one of the youngest members that worked with Raise Up Massachusetts to pass question four, which give earned save times to all Massachusetts workers. This is something that I'm proud of. Yeah. Because I don't want people to think that I'm just sitting here on a suit and just pops out. Ever since I have been in America, I have been doing everything that I could possibly do to give back to this community. Let's talk education. Let's do because it. Because <laughs> you went to a public community college, Massasoit, that we talked about. Yes. And full disclosure, I teach there. I've taught yeah. there for 25 years. I love every day yeah, that I yeah. go there. Um, education in Massachusetts is kind of under siege. Massachusetts is known for being an education state. We haven't touched the foundation formula since 1993 mm -hmm. when Brockton filed a lawsuit mm -hmm. to get equitable funding in education. We're sitting on a charter, and full disclosure again, I am a total opponent of charter schools, and I'm yeah. unapologetic about it mm -hmm. because I serve on a school committee that's a public school, Southeastern Regional. So the mayor of the city of Brockton mm -hmm. is the chairman of the school committee. Yeah. Which I think is the most important job in regard to serving the community. Because as you can see, the moment you get elected as mayor, you automatically become the chairman. Here's what I can promise you folks. I will be the chairman of the Brockton School Committee. I can understand that we have to, we can appoint somebody, but as your next mayor, I will do everything that I could possibly do to be there. You know why? Because without a piece of education, I can guarantee you, I wouldn't be able to be here. But because of that, here I am, not only an American, not only a city council at large, but I'm actually wanting for mayor to serve you. Think about that. Think about how many people in our city that can do exactly what I'm doing. But the only difference between them and I is because I was exposed to a lot of opportunities which were created by you, by your tax money, and helping me out to become the person that I am today. This is the opportunity that I would like every child in the city of Brockton to get access to, like going to the Brockton Public Library to learn English as a second language. And if you recall, when I was on the board of trustee for the library, the mayor wanted to cut the library budget in half, and I voted against it. I was the only person, if you recall, Mr. Chairman, who voted against it because I knew oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. how I, much. I, I voted. Well, I think, I think. No, I, we I, all I, we voted as a block. No, Mr. Chairman, at the beginning, yeah. I was the only person who voted against it after we realized that how crucial the library was. Yeah. And the mayor sent that 
budget recommendation to us, he gave the money back and everybody was happy with it. And I explained to them why I voted and they may have said because there was no money. And I knew there was money for all this stuff. But education is something that is well, so library, important to me. The library is education, community center, public safety. It's yeah. everything rolled into yeah. one, and it says the People's University upstairs. It is. It, I'm glad. And it truly glad is, it says and that's, that's where you started. Yes. So when you are faced with a tough budget yes. as the mayor, yes. your mayor puts the budget yeah. together, not that the council cuts the budget. Mm -hmm. We can if cut. You we got, if you had a crisis in mm -hmm. funding mm -hmm. and you had to make a choice mm -hmm. between public safety, education, library, how would you think that well, whole let process me, out? Let's face it, though. It's like you said education. I mean, education we is have part of... three minutes, just so I mean, know. well, education is part of the library, too. Right. So in terms of, like, public safety and, and education, I think education is important. But let's face it. The question is, what kind of issue are we talking about in terms of a crisis? Is it something that must be done as we speak? Then I'm going to have to act on it accordingly. But let's not just play the game. The thing is that we have to focus on what we think is best for all of us, not just a few of us. In the city of Brockton, as we speak, you know this and I know it, you are the chairman of the Brockton Public Library Board of Trustees. We have parents, especially single parents, who cannot afford a computer, who doesn't have access to the internet, and the only place their child can do homework is the library. Matter of fact, I would like the library to extend the hours of operations. I would like to see more people participate. I would like to see the technology that we have in terms of the, the laptop or the desktop, whatever you call it. I would like to see that somewhat getting better. But what I would like us to understand, if the outcome is positive for one of us, it's not good. It must be positive for all of us. I want you folks to believe in Brockton because you made me believe in Brockton eight years ago. Now it is my moment, it is our moment to focus in one city, one community, and one Brockton. I just want you to believe in the city. And together, there is nothing we cannot do, and we will do whatever we can possibly do to make Brockton better, stronger than ever before. 20 seconds. Give them your phone number and your website, and then I have to close the show. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jean Bradley Duenoncourt. Most people call me Jean. If you'd like to reach me, you can call me on my personal cell phone number, which I give out once after I've got elected, 774-297-0191. Or you can go on my website, votejeanbradley.com. It is always and it will always be my greatest privilege to serve you and listen to you and act accordingly as your employee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Much. Chairman. First time, won't be the last. We're going to be doing this all the way up through election and hope we'll have debates, robust debates, and to talk about all the issues. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, you're watching um, Candidates Corner. I have to get that out because it's the first one. I have to remember it. We're going to try to have every single candidate for every single office come on and talk directly to the voters. It's our mission at Brockton Community Access to educate people so they know what their choices are. It's unedited, uncut, and uncensored. On behalf of my staff and my whole crew at Brockton Community Access, I'm Mark Lindy. Thank you for joining us.